Thanks, Shauna. I'm here with Oracle Senior Vice President of Product Industries and Partnerships, Scott Twaddle, to dive deeper into deeper, deeper into the, some of the big announcements from Clay's keynote today, included dedicated Region 25. How are you, Scott? Oh, I'm doing well. It's been a great cloud world. Oh, I, I mean, lots going on for you. Lots it is. going on Busy for you. Time. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, let's dive into uh, to one of the biggest things, which is we we heard Clay del deliver some of the exciting news in his keynote about scaling down, right? Yeah. Um, and that is with the latest version of Dedicated Region. And as a quick recap, in case those who are tuning in right now didn't catch it, um, can you just uh, tell us what is Dedicated Region 25? Sure, sure. Well, I think it may probably makes sense to start with what is Dedicated Region. There you go. This is something that we launched back in 2018. It's really the only thing like it out on the market where we're able to take an entire cloud region, the same services that we build in our public cloud, and we're able to put that entirely into a customer's data center, their existing data center that they already own and they're already operating in. It's more than 150 cloud services now, the same set that we have in our public cloud region on premises within their, their, within their, with, within their, uh, within their data center dedicated to them. So what Dedicated Region 25 does is it makes it way simpler and easier for them to, to get a dedicated region. We've taken all of that 150 services and we've shrunk it down to now only three racks. Yeah. It's more than a 75% reduction of, of the number of racks that we normally, normally take to build a cloud region. But we've also removed a lot of the barriers uh, that our customers had that, that are related to their data center where we can put racks wherever they need them within their data center. We can run lower power racks now, and our racks are lighter. So there's a whole bunch of benefits that our customers are getting with this next, this next generation of, of dedicated region that we're building. That's awesome. What, what are some of the customer scenarios that dedicated region 25 is really geared to, to Yeah, solve? certainly. So we're seeing a lot of governments move more towards wanting data within a specific boundary or region. And, and we have a lot of customers that have operations all around the globe. And so with, with de dedicated region 25, it's much more easy for them to build lots of regions with that same IT strategy and, and put that data wherever they need it next to their customers and next to their use cases. It also enables a lot of very low latency use cases. When that data needs to be really fast to yeah. get to the end user, Dedicated Region is a great solution for that. And now with this smaller size and, and fewer restrictions around, uh, you know, fewer requirements for, uh, for a data center, we're able to put it into more and more and more places. Okay, so we, we heard Clay talk about um, this need to really fundamentally transform the way the cloud is built. Yeah. How does Dedicated Region 25 really mark a big shift in the way we've been building and delivering yeah. the cloud? So before, whenever we, we were building a dedicated region, we had very stringent requirements around the data center space. And so it ended up being a big engineering and, and, and construction project, you know, permits and, and design teams and everything that was, was, was required to actually bring the region up. Yeah. We've been able to do away with almost all of those now because we've standardized all of our hardware and, and we've built it in a way that it's ready to be deployed in the data centers that our customers have today. So we no longer need to go have a big special cage or a dedicated data hall. We no longer have special require, data uh, power requirements or, or specialized networking requirements because we've standardized all of the way that we build the hardware that runs all of those cloud services and we've done that in a way that it's built for enterprise data centers as they exist today. Yeah, yeah I, I was trying to get Clay to let me put one in my garage. They're, they're thought, pretty good looking, aren't they? They, they are, really they are. We saw it on stage, yeah. they look good. They really go right, nice right beside my car, right <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> so flexibility and scalability, scalability were big considerations in yeah. developing this. Why is that so top of mind right now? Yeah, certainly. So not all of our customers need to deploy 10,000 racks, right? Yeah. Like Clay's talked about, we have enormous data centers that we run our GPU clusters or for our public cloud regions. But most enterprises, when they're, when they're moving to cloud, they don't need that much space. So having this scale down story gives them a, a and the scale down capability gives them this, this great starting point to get, get going. Um, and, and maybe not every geography that they, that they operate in needs to have, to have a massive scale. But with dedicated region, we can start small and then we can grow with the business needs. You hmm. don't need to be a fortune teller to understand exactly how big your business is going to grow and how many IT, you know, how, how, how much cloud, cloud uh, hardware you're going to need. We're able to grow with your business and start as small as three racks and seamlessly without an interruption to our customers 
scale that up to tens of thousands of racks. It's right. really a great capability that 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 delivers on this promise of public cloud as well, right? Where you only you start small, you pay for what you need. We've taken that model and we we continue to deliver on on this 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 scalable cloud model, but for a dedicated purpose for a specific enterprise. Yeah, it's interesting talking to a couple of customers yesterday who are dedicated region yeah. customers. They talked about that sort of like, you know, maybe there will be a time very soon when they can start moving some of their workloads to yeah. the public cloud, but that's where they wanted to start. And so yeah. this gives an even different starting point, whether it's the same company or they just want to get started. Yeah, and, 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 and it's, a, it's a really great strategy for companies that are looking to make sure that they always have the latest and greatest IT services. Mm -hmm. Because as we, as we launch new cloud services, those services become available to our dedicated region customers. So they don't need to know what the next AI is going to be. We've got that covered and we'll make those services available to them as part of our standard offering as we launch it for our public cloud customers. So speaking of customers, Right before you sat down, we talked about how you've been having a really busy week with a lot of customer yeah. meetings. Has this gotten brought up, and what are customers saying? How are they responding? You know, customers are very excited about the opportunities here. You know, we were talking, you know, with with our, our great customers like Fujitsu, who have big global operations. This creates, you know, all kinds of new opportunity for them. Um, or, or customers like like Team I M out of New Zealand, where they're able to offer offer a sovereign cloud capability for that country that's designed for specifically for the requirements that that country has and the customers that, and customer needs that are within, within those borders. Yeah, so let's, let's actually dive into that. Another big theme here at, uh, at Cloud World this week has been security. We've heard yeah. Larry talk about it, we've heard Safra talk about it, we heard Steve talk about it, Clay talk about it. Um, what is Oracle doing to support customers who have specific data sovereignty requirements or other complex regulations to comply with? Uh, obviously, aside from what we're doing yeah, with dedicated. Yeah, data. certainly, and, and you heard you heard uh, Fujitsu talk about, this is one of their big use cases as well in, in the keynote earlier around, they're building a, a sovereign cloud capability using Oracle Alloy. So Oracle Alloy is our, our capability, it's built in the dedicated region family where we're enabling our customers to become cloud providers, right. to build cloud businesses. And really when we talk about data sovereignty, we're usually talking about some level of control. And so with, 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 with Oracle Alloy, those racks are located within that customer's data center. And within Oracle Alley, our, our partners are actually controlling the end customer relationship. And so, so the, 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 when a customer picks up the phone, they're going to reach Fujitsu, and that's a trusted relationship they have. So we're giving our customers control around how changes are deployed, around how the regions are accessed, all of these different elements of control that we're helping our customers meet their regulatory obligations and, and, their, uh, uh, um, and the expectations of their, their customer sets that they're serving. But what are some of the key operational controls that customers benefit from in using Alloy? Yeah, certainly. So uh, the biggest one I think is that, that because they are the cloud service provider, right? Rather than, than directly, con the end users are, instead of contracting with Oracle or OCI, they're contracting with our Alloy partners. And so those controls, um, as, as we let them become cloud providers, we help them become cloud providers, they're able to set pricing, they're able to set their go-to-market motion, they're able to, to really own that customer relationship end-to-end. -end. But we also give them knobs to manage access to, again, access to the regions, the locations obviously is something where that they control because it's in their data center. Um, and then there's all the kinds of operational capabilities that we continue to make available to those partners as well. So, so speaking of our customers, customer, again, another theme that we've been hearing a yeah. lot this week. Um, how is this enabling our customers to better serve their customers? I just heard you say like they'll have direct uh, contact with our alloy yeah. partners, but what does that actually mean for the end customer? Yeah, certainly. So, so many countries are quickly developing more and more regulations around data flows. And, and we are the leader in providing optionality for those customers of infrastructure. We're design, we've designed our cloud regions to help meet those requirements. So Alloy takes it in even a step further where we keep all of the data within those environments, but we're also uh, letting the, the, the actual like citizens or humans uh, that, 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 that align with those specific regulations are being the only ones that touch those cloud environments. And okay. so um, it's all about designing different levels of control for the specific regulations that those customers need to serve, and in the case of Alley, that those partners are building a cloud business around. Well, what are, let's talk about a, a, that 
different side of the alloy equation of being able to brand your own services. Yeah. You know, um, I've talked a lot to NRI, for example, building uh, applications for their financial institution yeah. customers. Larry talked about them on stage as well. Yeah. Um, you know, what are some of the use cases that we're seeing come out of that aspect of Alloy? Yeah, certainly. So, so many times we're, we're working with Alloy partners that have big established businesses. And we're able to bring the best of our, our cloud services to help them accelerate growth within those businesses. Many times they have specialized uh, managed services, whether those are security services or migration services or just overall manage, IT management services that they're delivering alongside the cloud services within Alley. It gives them a great envelope of control. But we also have customers that are building really differentiated applications and differentiated technologies that again runs right alongside the Oracle Cloud Services. So it's really one of those scenarios where one plus one equals three, where we're creating the two companies together in partnership are creating enormous value for the end customers that we're serving. Um, and, 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 and we're only getting started. We're, we're also enabling new use cases where customers are going to be able to bring their own hardware when they have specialized hardware that, that maybe we don't have on board. It's all about working with our partners to solve the actual problems that they need to grow their businesses and maximize their revenue as well. So, um, again, so many, so many exciting kind of announcements and, thing, and innovation, but what's next for the Oracle Cloud? Oh, it is an exciting time to be in cloud product development, let me tell you. Um, we're working on some really big ideas that are going to continue to transform the industry. Um, we're going to continue to focus on giving our customers additional levels of control. We're going to continue to focus on different scale models that really help our customers bring cloud services to wherever they need them for their businesses. Um, we're just getting started. You've seen this incredible uh, uh, trajectory of, of new development after new development as we launch new products. You should continue to see that. I don't want to give away too much because we're working on some pretty cool stuff. Uh, you'll have to come back next year and, uh, and, and we'll, uh, we'll be excited to talk about it at the next Cloud World as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Scott. This has been great. Great to be here.